Hello, my name is Jokovic and welcome to episode one of Design Principles, a series where I take traditional design principles and apply them to Minecraft. So these concepts are used in everything from graphic design to architecture to furniture design to fashion, and they can certainly help you out when you're building in Minecraft. So let's jump right into it. Today we're going to be talking about color theory, and we're just going to start with the basics. It doesn't get any more basic than our primary colors. So we've got red, yellow, and blue. And those are our primaries when we're talking about pigment colors. So imagine like you're painting. It's different when you're dealing with light, then your primaries are red, green, and blue, but that's a whole nother story. So we're just gonna deal with the primary pigment colors. Between those primary colors, we've got orange, green, and purple or violet. And those of course are made by mixing different combinations of our primaries. And then once you have that set, then you can start mixing even more colors and you get the tertiary colors, which are the ones in the gaps here. I couldn't really put those in to this setup because there aren't really concrete blocks in Minecraft that fit all of those colors. There are a few, but not all of them. So with these colors, we can start putting together color palettes and color schemes. So I'm gonna go over four different basic types of color schemes and how you can start using those in your builds and how you can start using them to choose blocks that look good together without having to place blocks until you just find something that looks good. This can make it a little bit easier. So the first set of color schemes we're gonna be talking about are complementary color schemes. And those are color pairs that are taken from opposite sides of the color wheel. So green's complement is red, blue's complement is orange, and purple's complement is yellow. And in the concrete blocks like this, to me at least, it doesn't look super great. They're so vibrant and so punchy that they kind of clash just because there's so much contrast there. So if you tone those colors down a little bit with something like the terracotta blocks, it can really help start to tie those colors together a little bit more. So this is where you start to see that you have a lot of room to play with those original colors. So this is still red and still green, but we're kind of going with a different red and a different green. And we push that a little bit further even over here. So I've kind of set these examples up so that you could see how you might use these color schemes in an actual build. So again, we're, we're switching up the red a little bit, going for a more purple kind of dark red and switching up the green again with a more blue kind of green. But it still definitely works and can tie in really well together. Same over here, switching up that blue and orange, but still staying within that complementary set. With the purple and yellow set here, we're going even more subdued. So the black stone here is really subdued, almost gray when you look at it from a distance. But when you get up a little bit closer, you start to see all this purple coming through. So you've got this dark purple here, lighter purple here. And then with the wood here with the stripped oak, you know, it's kind of a more desaturated yellow, this kind of tan color but it still definitely falls within that yellow range. And here I've just set this up so you can see kind of the options that you have when picking your colors. So I've got a bunch of different reds and a bunch of different greens. And you could pick, you know, one red and one green, and that would look pretty good. But you could also pick maybe a couple of reds and a couple of greens, and it could look a lot better. You get some color variation in there within your complementary color scheme. And then you also get some texture variation as well. Our next set of color schemes we're going to be talking about are analogous color schemes. And with analogous color schemes, instead of taking colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, like you would for a complementary color scheme, we're actually going to be taking colors that are really similar to each other. So colors that are near each other on the color wheel. So you could go with something like these, but you could even go with colors that are closer to each other on the color wheel. So like I was showing earlier, there are lots of colors between each of these colors. And so you could go with something like a blue-green or a cyan, and then a blue, and then maybe a more purple-blue. And that would still work within this analogous color scheme. And again, these look pretty punchy and vibrant, and so you might want to tone it down a little bit, maybe use something like the terracotta. And I'm using the terracotta here just to show that even if colors don't look really great together when they're really bright and vibrant like this, if you choose slightly different versions of the colors, they can really start tying in together. 
And here I've got a couple more examples, once again using the blackstone as our kind of purple, and this blue terracotta for our blue, and then the kelp blocks as our green. And so that follows this analogous set right here. And then here's our red, orange, and yellow color scheme that we had going over here as well. The third set of color schemes are triadic complementary color schemes. So those are very similar to regular complementary color schemes, but instead of taking two colors, you're going to be taking three colors. So if you remember with the complementary color schemes, you're taking the colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. You're kind of splitting the wheel in half and then taking the colors on either side of that. With a triadic, you're cutting the color wheel into thirds and taking the colors that fall on those thirds. Red, yellow, and blue is a triadic complement, so our primaries. Our secondaries are also a triadic complement. And then any colors you want to pick between those, as long as they fall, you know, kind of on those thirds. Again, the terracotta versions toned down a little bit. And then a couple of examples here. So you might look at this clay right here and think, well, that's basically just neutral gray. But if you take a little bit of a closer look at it, you can start to see maybe this here is pretty close to neutral. But then beside that, you see all of these other colors start to pop out. And you get something like this, or these really bright spots right here, that definitely start ranging closer to blue. And so even something like that, that can work really well as a blue block if you want something that's a little bit more toned down, desaturated. And so then we've got the red brick here as our red, and then the oak stairs as our yellow. So again, following that, try to complement there. And then here we've got the green, purple, and orange triadic complement using the strip jungle logs as our orange. This even has a little bit of green in it, but the overwhelming color in the middle here is that orange. So the fourth and final set of color schemes we're going to be talking about are split complementaries. And those, you do basically the same thing you would do with a regular complementary. You pick one color, so let's say red, and then you pick the color that is directly across from it on the color wheel. For red, its complement is green. But then instead of using that second color, you take the colors that are on either side of it on the color wheel. So for red, its complement is green, and the colors on either side of green are lime and cyan. If you start with cyan, its complement is red-orange, the tertiary color red-orange. And the colors on either side of red-orange are red and orange. Orange's complement is blue, and the colors on either side of blue are purple and cyan. Again, we've got those terracotta examples and a couple of ways you can use these color schemes in an actual build. So here we're using the dark oak as our orange. A lot of browns actually are really just dark orange. Some of them lean closer to red. But this one's definitely leaning closer to orange, so we're using that dark oak as our orange. We're using the uh, acacia bark as our purple. And this is another one that looks pretty close to neutral gray, but if you take something like this color right here, maybe that's neutral gray, or close to it, but then these stripes in here definitely start leaning a little bit more purple. And this is just to show, again, that you don't have to follow these color schemes exactly. You start with them, and then you play around to see what you like. Then we're using the prismarine here as our cyan. And this one over here, even though it's very similar to this one, we've got a lot of the same kind of feel happening, we're using a different color scheme to start out with. So for this one, we're using the red, orange, and cyan. Same one as over here. And this is a brown that definitely leans closer to red. You might look at this one and this one and think, well, they're both brown. But look how much red this one has compared to this one. And look how orange this one is compared to that one. And then we're using the stripped spruce as our orange. And again, a little bit of green creeping in here, but still mostly orange. And then we've got the uh, warped planks as our cyan. So that's the video on color schemes and the basics of color theory. I might do some videos in the future that go a little bit deeper into color theory, but I figured this would be the best place to start. So just use these as a jumping off point and then start changing it up a little bit until you find something that you like. That's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.